Hello everyone, it's Stephen Clark and friends. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening, no matter where you are. Hope you're all fit and well. Back with a light-hearted look at news from Thailand and Southeast Asia. So what have we got this time? Foreign visitors may soon no longer fill out the TM6 arrival and departure forms. High-speed train links airports in Bangkok. Travel advice on Indonesia. Tourists could soon be arrested for having sex outside of marriage. That's actually real. It's not made up. They're really thinking of doing that. Biometric identifies eight fake passports in Thailand. Are Chinese more important than Western tourists to Thailand? Hmm, interesting. Chinese again. 300 Chinese in the Philippines on a fraud crackdown. But first up, ceiling tiles fall at Bangkok's Central Plaza, Westgate Mall. Yes. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane. No, it's it's a tile. No, no, it's, it's, it's ceiling tiles coming down. Ceiling tiles fall down to the atrium of Central Plaza, Westgate, Mall. Oh, let me rephrase that. The size of a Ford pickup fell down at Central Plaza, Westgate, Mall. Fair enough, there was very heavy rain at the time. The management of the Mall said there was no injuries and nobody was hurt during the incident. Repairs had been completed and it is business as usual. The plaza said on its Facebook account on Thursday the severe weather conditions caused the ceiling to collapse. No people were injured and there was slight damage to some of the shops. The mall was open and engineers were examining the structure to find the cause of the problem. Yeah, find the cause of the problem and it's still open. I just wonder how many people are sitting there now in that shopping centre and just looking up at the ceiling. (laughs) (laughs) Bangkok, Thailand can be such a wonderful city and when you come through immigration there's nothing worse than having to fill out that departure and entry card. Well, it's all about to change. For the better, I hope, a senior government official has stated it will be no longer necessary to fill in your arrival and departure card. The TM6. Kamsak Putrakul, Deputy Senior General to the Prime Minister, also unveiled an application in the work for the 24-hour TM30 form system, which has absolutely been dragged across the coals the last couple of months. Cubsack said both the changes are designed to attract more visitors into the Kingdom of Thailand. They came to this conclusion this week. Talk about quick off the mark. Life will be much easier for tourists and foreigners visiting Thailand, Cubsack stated. Explaining the government's decision, Cubsack said arriving and departure forms for tourists, known as a TM6 form, have led to storage problems. Yeah, uh, so they have 20 million visitors a year, I suppose that's a lot of forms. Well, maybe they've just found something that works and don't like to admit the old system doesn't work. I am reporting a three airport high-speed train project is moving ahead. The new service would connect Sawanipun and Don Mawang International Airports with Utopia Airport in Rayong, servicing Pattaya and the Eastern Economic Corridor. The project would be 220 kilometres of high-speed rail A meeting with State Rail, Public-Private Partnership and CP Holdings. The paperwork just needs to be basically a little bit of fine tuning and then it will be submitted to the Environmental Minister for an assessment 
and the Transport Minister, the Eastern um, Economic Com Corridor Policy Committee, and then it will go to Cabinet. So that means that the project is moving closer. The State Rail of Thailand would hand over 4,421 rye for the project within the next two years as the construction progresses. The cost is 224.5 billion with CP Holdings seeking 117.2 billion in state support. The project from start to finish is expected to be five years. So what we could all hope for is whichever airport you dropped off on, if you wanted to go to Pattaya, you wanted to go to Rayong, uh, you just jump on the train without any hassle. And I dare say it would be very, very um, cost efficient. So let's look forward to this one and uh, Johnny Siam out. Bye. Australia has updated its travel advice for Indonesia, warning tourists could be soon charged for having sex outside of a marriage. Indonesia is gearing up for some pretty stringent laws on the sexual behaviour in its country, which includes no sex outside of marriage, which translates to no sampling of goods. <laughs> and you're not allowed to live together unless you're married. So you got it, no practicing, so you'll never know if they fart in their sleep. Quite a few laws are about to change in Indonesia. This is one of them. Will it include foreign residents and tourists? If they pass that law, you could virtually kiss uh, Indonesia's tourist industry goodbye. Because you won't be able to kiss anything else when you're in Indonesia on holidays. Oh, this has just come to light in the last few hours. The Indonesian president wants to delay planned vote in parliament on the new penal code that would criminalise sex outside of marriage and gay sex was met by relief from some but sparked criticism from other conservative Muslims who backed the new bills. The president said earlier on Friday that 14 articles needed further review by the parliament and ordered the vote delayed. Well, that's a bit of relief if you're heading for Indonesia for a holiday. Johnny Siam reporting. The new biometric system, which is now installed in Thailand's 16 airports, has proven its worth as immigration police have detected eight fake passports in the last three days. Three were from an Iranian family and they picked their passports up from Turkey in transit. They were on their way to an EU country to claim asylum. Also another man, Iranian, he was picked up with a stolen passport which had been reported to Interpol. The passport was originally from, a, from Sweden. He also was on his way to England to claim asylum. Another three Palestinian women were also found with fake passports. The one thing they all had in common, the passports were from Iranian agents and the price for the passports was from 136,000 baht to 1.7 million baht. There was also an African man picked up with a fake passport. He once again was on his way to another country but the system has proven its worth by alerting 1,123 people on either a blacklist or a watch list. A total of 622 individuals have been arrested for warrants. Over 45,000 have been discovered for overstay. So to get to the point, in three days, the system has worked so well that it's brought into the kingdom 81 million Thai baht. So uh, a wonderful system, and it's certainly paying for itself. Johnny out. Johnny Siam reporting. The Thailand tourist industry has come out and said that they like the Chinese as they come in numbers and outspend the Europeans by 53%. The Chinese spend on an average per day US $192, which is 53% more than the Europeans who spend US $125 a day. The total expenditure in Thailand is a yearly figure of just over 15.3 billion US dollars. So that's why Thailand is welcoming the Chinese, based upon a monetary factor only. But not everybody welcomes the Chinese. 
On the same note, it's not always open arms for the Chinese. Philippine immigration officials backed up with army troops last week arrested over 300 Chinese for alleged cyber crimes. The week prior, a similar number were arrested and detained over an investment fraud. The Immigration Commissioner, Jamie Montre, said most of the detainees did not have correct documentation and will be deported. Johnny Siam out.